The underworld is something that many people want to stay far away from, yet at the same time they want to know all about. The following story needs your close attention, because it's complex and very interesting. It's about a man that grew to become one of the Netherlands' biggest players without law enforcement batting an eye. This man was against all sorts of violence his entire life until something made him snap. What happened afterwards was unheard of and became shocking worldwide news. This is the story of Roger P. Roger P, also known as Piet Costa, is an intriguing figure in the Dutch underworld. He was born and raised in Rotterdam in the early 70s, and for how big of a player he is in the underworld, there is relatively little information known about him. The first part of his nickname, Piet, derives from a slight change to his last name. The second part, Costa, is because he frequently travelled to Costa Rica. As far as his early life goes, all that is known is that Roger was involved in two robberies, one bank robbery and one other robbery, which he had two small counts for on his criminal record. In the 2000s, he also dabbled in manufacturing speed on a small scale, but nothing too crazy. So how did this man turn into a mythical figure in the underworld? Well, between 2006 and 2009, Roger was jailed. This jail sentence will be of great importance for the rest of his career. Since 2009, Roger frequently traveled to Latin America, and more specifically, Panama, Costa Rica, and Colombia. It is not illegal to visit those countries. However, why did he go so often? And maybe even more importantly, how come that this small time criminal all of a sudden had connections in Latin America after being in jail? Who did he meet in jail that put him in contact? There are a lot of questions regarding this and the answers will follow in this video. His first visit to Panama was on the 17th of September, 2009. The frequency in which he visited Panama alerted the authorities who in their turn informed the Dutch authorities. Here is where it gets fascinating. In the early 2000s, the coke lines into Europe were dominated by the Italian mafia and goods were always shipped from Colombia via ports in either Spain or Italy. However, after a shift in the market in Colombia, the Italians lost their monopoly position in 2008. This created a golden opportunity for smugglers from the Netherlands, who controlled the ports in Rotterdam and Antwerp to step in. The volume going through both ports was on the rise, which led to a smaller percentage of containers being scanned. Pair that with good infrastructure and the opportunity to become filthy rich by smuggling was wide open. Here is where Samir Scarface Buya Klishan came in. Samir is one of the biggest smugglers the Netherlands has ever known. He usually only worked with Moroccan guys, but since 2010, there was one Dutch guy in his group. It was Roger. How come? I hope you still remember the question we just had. Who did Roger meet while serving his time that suddenly put him in contact with Latin American cartels? It was Mustafa F, an important member of Samir Scarface's group. Roger, with his expertise, would focus on the logistics side of Samir's immensely large business. He would oversee transports and their people in the ports of Antwerp and Rotterdam. As the coke market in Europe grew, Samir and Roger would go on to make millions. In 2014, there was a lot of turmoil in the Dutch underworld. Kingpin after Kingpin gets whacked. In August 2014, it was Samir who got removed. This meant that the spot he filled suddenly was wide open. Roger stepped up to partly take this spot and suddenly got a lot more power and influence. It came at a cost though. Roger was informed that he was also on a list. This led to the decision he made to permanently move to San Jose, Costa Rica in 2015. In Costa Rica, he started a pineapple plantation, which makes a lot of sense. Pineapples are often used as a cover-up during smuggling. In the following years, Roger, together with Mustafa F, would go on to smuggle thousands of kilos into Europe from Costa Rica, hidden in shipments of pineapples. Business was booming and people liked to do business with Roger because you just knew he would make you a lot of money. He was a good guy and despised violence. Some in the underworld called him Switzerland. He did not have any enemies and would never pick sides. While there were endless feuds going on in the Netherlands, 
Roger remained quiet and did not get involved. Even if someone stole from him or screwed him over, he would not resort to retaliation. He took it on the chin and made the money back again, no problem. Roger made the calculation for himself. That retaliation would cost him much more money than just letting it go. Some called him Candy because he was too sweet, but at the end of the day, it was all about the money for him. And police always went after the most violent kingpins. Him being so against retaliation made it only more mind-blowing what he was up to next. In May 2016, some trouble arose. Roger was working on a transport line from Costa Rica. Usually when smugglers discover a new line, they send a few test shipments. This time it was different. Roger's supply was sitting on a lot of kilos he needed to get rid of as soon as possible. Roger did not want to lose out on the deal, and even though there was no time to send a test shipment, he agreed to buy it. The total shipment would amount to nearly 4,000 kilos, with a value of nearly 100 million euros in the Netherlands. So it was a huge shipment to send via a new and untested line. Once arrived in the port of Antwerp, the container was scheduled to be scanned despite all preparations. Mustafa immediately panicked and contacted Roger and Neymar Jalal, the godmother of Coke, who was involved in the shipment as well. It was already too late. The shipment was busted and nearly 4,000 kilos were seized. This caused a lot of friction between Mustafa and Roger and distrust started to build from Mustafa's side. Roger remained calm and accepted the loss as it's part of doing business. They decided to quit doing business with each other. Mustafa, who was also in a feud with the Ridwan Tahi, was later jailed in 2017 in Marrakesh after nearly escaping a whack from men sent by Tahi. Roger obviously did not want to be involved in any of that and decided it was time for him to go back under the radar again and operate solo with his own group. 2020 would mark the year that things radically changed for Roger. And when I say radically, I really mean it. According to leaked Encro chat messages, trouble started brewing when an associate of the group called Ali Reza D allegedly stole 130 million euros from Roger that he had stashed in Dubai. Can you imagine someone stealing 130 million from you? 130 million made even Roger absolutely furious where in the past he would let it slide, he could not let this one slide. In January 2020, Roger sent 25-year-old Ibrahim A, a young confidant of Roger, to Dubai to meet up with Ali Reza and get the money back. Ibrahim worked for Roger as a chauffeur and an assistant and was rising up the ranks in the organization. The mission did not succeed and Ibrahim came back empty-handed. Roger then lured Ali Reza to the Netherlands. Once here, Ali Reza is, let's say, sat down for a serious conversation. This led to Ali Reza returning nearly 50 million to Roger, and he also promised he would return the rest of the money. Once set free, Ali Reza in his turn was pissed about what had just happened. He felt humiliated, and revenge was bound to come. Fast forward to May 2020. Ibrahim was on his way to his mother in Rotterdam, Without him noticing, two men with balaclavas were hiding in the bushes. As Ibrahim walked past, they jumped out of the bushes and unleashed for as long as 15 seconds, according to neighbors who heard it. That was the end of Roger's trusted associate, Ibrahim. This event would become the catalyst for what is about to come and honestly change Roger into an entirely different person. I usually don't do this kind of stuff, but currently there are a few. I hope I can hurt them read a message sent by Roger. A response read, isolated three times, even while standing right beside it. You won't hear a thing. Five months after the theft of the 130 million, the feud totally erupted. Ali Reza supposedly put multiple people from Roger's camp on a list, including Roger himself. Ibrahim was taken care of, and Roger should be next. At least, that was the idea. After hearing this, Roger's mindset radically changed. Where he would previously avoid violence at all costs, he was now eager to dish it out on an unprecedented level. He ordered Robin van O to build him his own prison. Robin found a suitable warehouse in the Vos Blantaja in Brabant, 
He brought in seven sea containers, isolated them all, and transformed six of them into full-blown jail cells with toilets and handcuffs attached to the floor and walls. The seventh, well, the seventh was slightly different. This container had an old dentist chair in the middle of it, in which people could be tied up for, let's say, a nice conversation. Bro, sooner or later, it's going to be their turn. No mercy, believe me. Roger texted Robin. While reading all the EncroChat messages live, police had a strong belief it was only a matter of time before the first person was sent to the improvised jail cells. They had to step in. It was go time. On the 22nd of June, 2020, they raided the warehouse, and what they would discover was never seen before. The footage of the chambers went across the globe, and for Dutch measures, this was absolutely unheard of. Upon further investigation, they found a lot of official police clothing and stop signs, which was supposed to be used by the team to arrest the targets and bring them to the cells. They also found tools such as screwdrivers, garden shears, scissors, pliers, and even a bathtub. Please use your imagination for what they could do with the bathtub as I need to consider the platform's policies. The people who would end up here would be in a seriously intense experience, so to say. Everyone at the scene was in awe of what they saw. As the warehouse got raided on the 22nd of June, 2020, so was Roger's apartment in Rotterdam. He tried to flee, but did not get far. After years of being under the radar, police finally got to him not in sunny Costa Rica or Dubai, but in the city where he was born and raised. During his trial, Roger sat in a wheelchair because he hurt himself while playing soccer in jail. The entire hearing, he sat with a hoodie over his head and with a face mask, which is still the reason there is only one picture of him to be found. He absolutely did not want to be photographed nor drawn. During the first session, he only said four words to be exact and remained silent for the rest of the trial. He was sentenced to 17 years and nine months in jail for smuggling, which was the maximum sentence. For the chambers, he received a sentence of 12 years. Roger reacted sober and calmly upon hearing the verdict. It was obvious to him that long sentences would be given. His lawyer immediately appealed the sentences though. Interestingly enough, he was on the verge of bringing in a shipment of 25,000 kilos from Colombia all in one shipment via his own boat. However, unfortunately for Roger, he was arrested before it could happen. This might be one of the most interesting stories I have ever worked on. The way he entered the upper echelon of the underworld, how he remained under the radar for quite a long time and only cared about business, to ultimately doing exactly what he had always sworn not to do. Resorting to violence is what led to his demise. This was the story of Roger Piet Costa P.